good morning to our uh, Facebook crowd this morning. I want to welcome all of our regulars, and as I always say, our guests. We, we noticed this morning we have lots of guests, and we thank God for that. What the devil meant for our hurt, God turns for our good. Yes. Listen, we got several people have asked about how to pay tithes during this time. There's instructions on our Facebook page for online giving. You can also mail to P.O. Box 902, Sullivan, Alabama, 35586. Also, be in prayer for our Assembly of God World Missions Director, Greg Mundus, and his wife. They're both in critical condition with the coronavirus. So it, it's, it's hit, it hits home sometimes. So be in prayer for those uh, in this time. Also, be watching on our Facebook page for further instructions. We don't know what next week's going to hold. We don't know what tomorrow's going to hold. But we will keep you updated as to how we're going to continue on and uh, having our services online or wherever, wherever how we do that. Uh, I noticed so there's a post this morning on AL.com and it said this, and it struck me wrong, right? maybe it struck me right. It said, it's Sunday morning in the South with no church. Let me tell you, that didn't hit me well. And I replied, it is Sunday morning in the South uh, with the church being the church. Because yeah. the test of a Christian is this, when you can't go to church, will you beat the church? Yeah. That's the true test of the church. Listen, this is not the church, the building that we're in right now. You are the church. So I want to encourage you to, listen, during this period of time, get closer to God. Get closer to your family. God has gave us a shutdown and a way to grow and be faithful. So listen, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you so much. And God, we thank you this morning for this opportunity. Father God, like in the times past when the church was persecuted, when the church had pressure, all it did was to spread the church into places where it wasn't at the start with. We believe that during this time, that Father God, people will join us that have never joined us before. We believe that in this time, people will come to Christ that never thought they would before. There will be those that are in bondage that will get deliverance, God, that they thought they never would get. There will be those that are homesick and they'll be healed, Father God, and they thought they never would. There will be those, Father God, that are heartbroken, but they'll be uplifted by the things that they hear throughout Facebook and all the other ways that your church is, is sending out the Word of God. We know the Word will have free course, and we know the Word will not come back void. And, Father God, we pray today that everything that is said and done in this building, Father God, as it goes out into the airways, God, that it glorifies you, that it lifts up the name of Jesus, your Son. For everyone on this stage is about to make a sound, whether it be by instrument or by, by voice, we pray that your anointing would be so, so strong upon them, Father God, that even in the homes, in the cars, and wherever people are, they will draw them into worship. Fathers, our pastor brings a word today, Father God, I know it's an anointed word. And I pray, God, that it would do the thing that you have designed it to do. You saw this day in eternity past, and you designed everything we're doing today for your glory and for your honor. Saves lives, Father God. Change hearts, Father God. Heal bodies, heal hearts, and heal minds, and give deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's see if you worship at home this morning. Amen. Praise God. I know you worship here, but can you worship at home this morning with us?
were faithful to the end. When my enemies surround me, I'm safe within your hands. You were faithful to the end.
mighty through God yes. for the pulling down of strongholds. Thank you, worship team. Y'all did a did a great job. I appreciate you coming out early this morning and, and getting everything ready to go. And sometimes it's uh, some would say it's hard to worship when there's not a lot of people here. But I don't find that a problem. Okay. Amen. We we worship during practice this morning. So I thank these guys for coming and, and being a part of things this morning. If you have your Bible this morning, we'll get straight into the Word this morning without much ado. And uh, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Uh, appreciate you joining us by live stream this morning. This is the first. Uh, first with an empty sanctuary. And, uh, I'm thankful this morning though, Brother Kevin, that, uh, you know, the devil is a prince in the power of the air. Right. And he rules the airways. He really does. Yeah. Yeah. From from Hollywood to the radio, he, he rules. But this morning, <laughs> Amen. What he meant for bad, God has taken for good. I lived on Facebook just a little bit before uh, before service started, and I was amazed that every church uh, this morning broadcasting over Facebook. So if you don't hear church this morning, you don't hear preaching, you're just about out of luck this morning because we're flooding the Facebook field, Amen. and uh, we're coming at you. Amen. So you may think you shut the church down, but it ain't this building. Yeah. It's the people, and thank God for technology this morning. There may be so many on Facebook that it crashes this morning, but if it does, we'll record this thing. We're going to get it out one way or the other. Amen. Amen. Right. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, the Bible says, For wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand, withstand, in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to stand against the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let us pray. Father, God, I thank you this morning, Lord, for the anointing that I feel in this house, God. It's not about numbers and it's not about people, but it's by your spirit, you say. And God, I feel it in this place today. And I pray, God, in somebody's living room, in somebody's house, God, that you'll go in this morning and speak the word of God into their life and into where they are right now. In Jesus' name, and the church said, and the living room said, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, I tell you what, over the last couple of days, the last couple of weeks in particular, this world has been thrust into a very unique battle. That's right. uh, different from anything that I've ever seen. And the more I see, and the more I, I realize this battle is, is more of a spiritual nature than, than probably most people are willing to, to recognize. Amen. So I want to urge you this morning to, to take note, as Paul suggested here in Ephesians, and suggested that the battle that we're facing here now, it's not flesh and blood, right. but it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. Amen? Let me say that again. I want to stress that this battle is spiritual. Amen. And for a few minutes this morning, I want to try and point out to you some of the spiritual forces that I see at work and have seen since this coronavirus began to sweep the globe some things that, that I've saw and some things that I've recognized and some things I want to show to you that, that you'll see it. And when you do, I want to give you the reaction that we should have as a church to the things and how we should respond to it. And the first thing that comes to my mind is fear. We talked about this two weeks ago here in the church, I think, on Sunday morning, a, a fear. And, you know, I, I, I see right now, label how you want to label it, but I see a spirit of fear. Yes. That is has swept across the globe just as just as quick as this this virus is swept from one side to the other. This spirit of fear. So many people right now are scared to death. That's right. They're scared to death of what's happening and and, and what's going to happen. And fear paralyzes us. And fear it, it keeps us from moving forward. Fear causes us to turn on each other. You know, I saw just this week on on Facebook and, and people saying and doing crazy stuff and people. Demanding, we got one positive case in Lamar County. People demanding to know who that person is. Come on, demanding. What are we going to eat our own now? We're going to devour our own because somebody is sick. 
Listen, that's not the way to handle this. Yeah. This is the way the enemy would have us to handle this. Amen? What was to, to, to move in fear and operate in fear because fear is the opposite of faith. And you can't operate in faith and operate in fear at the same time. I know some people have questioned and said, well, we're closing our churches out of fear. No, we're not closing our churches out of fear. The church can't be closed. Amen? Amen. This was proven in Acts chapter 2. You can't, you can't shut this thing down once it was birthed. Amen? Yeah. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can prevail against it. Amen. Nothing can. But this wisdom says right now we, we need to stop if we can the flood of people in the hospitals. And the way to do that is to is to stop the big gatherings. Amen. Right. But but we can't operate in fear. What do we do in the midst of fear? One thing we have to remember is this: is in the midst of fear, God is trustworthy. I said God Amen. is trustworthy. Amen. 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 Psalms 27 and verse 1. The, the psalmist David said this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Get that. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Right. I don't want to be afraid when God's on my side. Amen. Amen. Sure, we, we're concerned and, and where we should be, but we can't operate in fear. We, we can't operate in panic. No. I saw panic. Uh, Webster's defines panic as this, a sudden uncontrollable fear or anxiety, right. often causing wildly unthinking behavior. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you say amen? amen? This is where we are, amen? Yes. This, is, this spirit of panic is, is a perverse, it's a perverse spirit that destroys wisdom. Amen. Listen, we have to move in wisdom, amen? Yes. Uh, this last week, uh, when we first begun testing in the state of Alabama, and, and, and I commend the Church of the Highlands for, for trying to do what they tried to do, and they set up a testing center, and panic ensued, and everybody's trying to get into panic, the, the testing center. Yeah. Well, they, they had to shut it down yes. because of so many people flooding that center. Mm -hmm. We've got to have wisdom. We, God gives us wisdom. Amen. Amen. Amen? God said if any man lack wisdom, ask of him. Amen? He would give us wisdom. Now, I may go a little political this morning. Uh, probably shouldn't be in this Facebook Live, but I'm going to do it anyway. Amen? Yeah. I thank God. Uh, you can say what you want to say about our president. You can, you can be against him. You can stand against him or whatever. But I thank God for a president that's surrounding himself with, with a religious council of Christian leaders yeah. that are speaking wisdom into him, that are having prayer for him. Amen? Amen. They're having prayer for him every morning. He's doing press conferences in the afternoon. But, but top religious leaders in this country, some of whom I have a lot of confidence in, yeah. are surrounding the president and they're praying for him that Amen. God would give him wisdom. Amen? Amen? And if you're not praying for him, shame on you. That's right. Amen. If you're not, if you're not praying for our president, shame on you. If you're so political and you're so bound by politics that you can't pray for the president, shame on you. Amen. I'm going to go a step further. When the checks come out, he's not your president, don't take the check. Amen. <laughs> that went over better than the live church. Amen. <laughs> it really would. I'm learning from this Facebook live. Amen. But, but here's the deal. The scripture tells us this. Philippians 4, 6, Paul says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Yes. God, we need wisdom. We, we need understanding. Amen? We, we, we need this spirit of, of panic to be gone. This spirit of deception. Amen? I mean, you realize there's a spirit of deception that's alive and well. It began, it began operating with, what was it, Xi Jinping? The Chinese president or whatever he is. See, see, he told our leaders that this thing's not that bad. We've got it all under control. Right. Don't worry about anything. Amen? What was it? That was a lie. Amen? It was a lie. It was a spirit of deception. I'm confident that it was not just him, but it was something working through him and over him. And he voiced this lie. And sure enough, the nation, the world, let their guard down. And then this thing came in like a flood so fast that it seems like some nations now, if they're having so much trouble even slowing this thing down because of this lying spirit. Amen. Amen. A lying spirit. Now, I see the news media today and so many of them that they can't put the well-being of the country in first place. And, and they're committing the same atrocity. And they're allowing this lying spirit to, to move on them. Amen. But I got news for you. God is truth. Amen. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Amen. Uh, he is truth. There's no lie in him. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Amen. That's right. 
right. He is truth. Amen. So we got to cast down this, this, this lying spirit. This, this spirit of, I saw sickness on every hand. We see it on the TV. Mm -hmm. Amen. The sickness that is swept the land. This, 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 this pandemic, this thing can't be denied. Right. You, you turn on the news, you can't deny what's taking place. And what's going on around the world. And, and chances are it's going to come a more evident in our area here yes. really quickly. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the sickness is going to become more evident. But, but listen, it's a spirit. You say, preacher, I don't know about that being a spirit. Let me share something with you. Let me share something with you from Luke chapter 13. Verse 10. It says, now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman. Watch this now. Scripture said, who had a spirit of infirmity. Mm -hmm. For 18 years it was bent over and could not in no way raise herself up. Did you notice the word of God didn't say she was sick? Right. The word of God didn't say she had crippling arthritis or some other physical uh, impairment. Amen. Right. That was holding her bound over. No, it says she had a spirit of infirmity. That, that's the spirit of sickness. But Jesus saw that spirit of infirmity. And the scripture said he called to her, called her to him, and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. He didn't say you're loose from your sickness. He didn't say you're, you're loose from your disease. You're loose from arthritis, diabetes. He said you're loose from this infirmity. Amen. I'm convinced more and more every day that this is not a sickness as man would see a sickness. But this is a spirit of infirmity. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, this said, Jesus laid his hand on her and immediately she was made whole. Mm -hmm. mm. She was made straight and she glorified God. Yes. Can I tell you this morning, God's our healer. Yes. Yeah. Can I say it again? God is our healer. Amen. And the same woman that spoke, the same God, excuse me, the same God that spoke with that spirit of infirmity and he spoke to it in that woman and said, woman, you're loose. That same God can speak over this situation today if we'll look to him and say, I'm going to give you wisdom and I'm going to pull you out of this thing. I'm going to pull you out of this thing. He can do that. Yeah. That's the God that we serve. Amen. A spirit of, what, we, we, we hear this word pandemic over and over again. And, and that word pandemic means that it's spread globally. Mm -hmm. This this virus has spread globally from, from the smallest town. I, I hope some of my friends this morning are watching. This is an amazing thing. Facebook is amazing. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Uh, the devil meant it for bad. I know he did, but God used it for good. Amen. And all the way over in Old Daniel Sambu, uh, in Tanzania, Africa, hello, Raphael and Pastor Joseph. I hope you're watching this morning. But in that smallest little village mm -hmm. on the other side of the world, this virus has broke out there. And they have this virus in, in their neighborhood where hospitals, hospitals are, are miles and miles and miles away. Amen. So it's, this pandemic has spread from the smallest little villages in Africa all the way to New York City, Seattle, Washington, the bigger cities, Paris, London, Rome, all the bigger cities are, are experiencing this thing. Amen. And what it has brought and what it has ushered in is a spirit of insecurity. Amen. Because nobody thinks they're safe anymore. Sure, we have lockdowns now. Sure, we have we have voluntary. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Quarantine, voluntary quarantine. People putting themselves in the home and closing the door. This thing makes you feel unsafe everywhere. It makes you feel like there is nowhere that you're safe. There's nowhere you can go and you can hide from this thing. You can stay home. You can lock the doors. You can close the windows. You can shut the blinds. But still down inside, the enemy will bring upon you a spirit of insecurity. Well, how safe are you? And who have you come in contact with? And how long is it going to be before you get sick? How long is it going to be before you can't breathe? I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. Amen. I, I rebuke that because listen to me, God is our protector. Yeah. And when the enemy comes and the enemy comes in like a flood and he brings in the spirit of insecurity, God is our protector. Amen. Yeah. God is there. Listen, the psalmist David also said this in Psalm 91. Who, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right. Now I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and he is my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Amen. That's my God. He's our refuge. Amen. He's our protector. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. These, these spiritual bombardments that we're getting. Church, we've got to rise up against, against them. Amen. Uh, a spirit of greed. 
And how, about, how much hoarding have you saw going? Well, this has been the news. Amen. This has been the news of this thing. Amen. All the hoarding that's going on. People going crazy. I understand you got to have toilet paper. But my gosh, not a whole carload. Right. Amen. What possesses somebody? I thought it was crazy when, when we get it. James Spann sent out a, a, a snow warning. I thought it was crazy then. Amen. When, when everybody goes and buys up all the milk and bread. Here we are. Milk and bread's gone. Toilet paper's gone. Everything's gone. Because why? Because of this greed. The spirit of greed. And listen, it doesn't just stop with individuals. I noticed the other day, I was in a local store, and I'm not going to call their name because I appreciate the stores. I appreciate what they've done in their attempts to, to restock the shelves. But I was in a store that day and ran out of toilet paper, and they brought in new toilet paper. This is just short days after they ran out. Right. And they brought in new toilet paper, and I would have never noticed it if the, if the toilet paper hadn't been sitting right there beside the checkout counter. Right. And I looked down in that thing, and I thought, man, they didn't take long doing that. Where the roll that holds the toilet paper used to be about this big around. Y'all know. Mm -hmm. It was about this big around. And it's about that much toilet paper on it. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow. Well, they moved quick on that. Yes, yeah. I went to another store. It's out of bread. Amen. Well, they had, they had some bread over there. Now, I wondered why they had that bread. They had no other bread. And I grabbed me a loaf of it. And it was froze hard as a rock. Mm. Been in the back in the freezer for some time. What, what, what's going on here? Can I just go ahead and call it what it is? A spirit of greed. Yes, yes. A spirit of yes, greed. Yes. Amen. Yes, amen. We, we can't succumb to this. Amen. Because this is not what God is about. Amen. First Timothy 6 and 10 tells us the love of money is what? The root of all evil. Not money, money's not the root of all evil. But the love of money. Amen? Amen. And see, that goes contrary to who God is because God is generous. Amen? Right. He's a good, good father. He's not withholding anything good from you. And, and God's not hoarding up his blessings. Amen? He's trying to find out a way to get them to us. Amen? He's not hoarding them up and not keeping them away from us. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, Paul said, God's able to make all grace abound toward you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance. For every good work. That's what God wants. Amen. Amen. He, and, and Paul goes on to say this. My God shall supply what? All your needs according to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. That, that's not a hoarding God. And God does not want us to be a hoarding people. So what we got to do in this time. Rebuke that spirit. Help a brother out. Amen. 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 Help somebody out. Somebody around you that needs help. Reach out to them. Amen. A, a spirit of, of poverty that is sweeping the land right now. The financial insecurity that we're seeing right now. Stock markets. Yeah. Lost, they lost all the gains that they had managed since Trump had been in office. Almost crashing. Amen. But that's not the God we serve. That's right. But the enemy wants that. Yeah. The enemy wants us in financial insecurity. The enemy wants us thinking, how are we going to make it tomorrow? How am I going to put food on my table? How am I going to pay my bills? Let me tell you something. You serve the God of more than enough. And if you're his child, if you're his child, you serve the God of more than enough. And he's not going to put you into something you can't handle. Amen? Amen. God's not going to make you yeah, give me praise in here. Praise God, we have church in here anyhow. Amen? Amen. These spirits that we got to rebuke and put down. You say, preacher, I don't believe in all those spirits. Well, see it as an attitude then. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. An attitude of control. A spirit of control. Amen? See, even in the midst of this, you have people that want to control you. They want to control your thinking. Come on now, the enemy wants to control your thinking. That's right. That's right. He, want to control, he wants to control how you think. He wants to control where you go. He wants to co control your movement. Through this, he wanted to control the church. And he thought he had the church. Well, the joke's on him this morning. Amen. Amen. I'll say it again, I'll say it again, and I'll say it again. The joke is on him today. Amen. Amen. We, we labeled this this morning. What well, we labeled it? Uh, Cyber Sunday. Cyber Sunday. Amen. Cyber Sunday. Church never had a Cyber Sunday before. We haven't one today, Jack. Amen. We're going out all over the globe. And people are hearing the gospel. Amen. People that don't normally go to church. They tuned in on Facebook. Yeah. People that can't get that. They watch it on Facebook. People that are sick, they've been church in a while. Amen. Guess what? Mm. That they're tuned in today. Amen. Amen. In the middle of this spirit of power and this, this spirit of control. God is still supreme. Yes. He's still 
supreme. Amen. The word tells us that by him all things were created. Amen. Let me get a little red. Maybe. What nothing done, unless it's done by him. Amen. Right. Did nothing get did until God did it. Amen. That's, right. That's who he is. He's still supreme. So in the middle of all this, in the middle of this, this, this chaos, this spirit of chaos, all around us. God's still in control. That's right. I come to bring you good news this morning. Amen. Yeah. That in the middle of all this, this chaos and all this uncertainty, God is still the God of peace. Amen. He is peace. He brings peace. He brings peace. In. You can't even understand. In the midst of times that you can't even grasp it. Right. He still brings peace. Yeah. He still peace, speaks peace. In the middle of your storms. In the middle of this storm. God's still speaking, speaking peace. Amen. Yeah. You, you got people that uh, I heard this morning where one of the whiskey distillers was closing down. Mm -hmm. Amen. They're starting tomorrow. You know what they're going to do? They're making hand sanitizer. Yeah. Jack Daniels is no longer making bourbon. Tomorrow they're starting to make hand sanitizer. Yeah. Because this nation needs it. Yeah. General Motors, they're shutting down part of their, their, their manufacturing of automobiles. They said, we can make respirators. We can make ventilators. We can do it, bless God. Yeah. Guess what? This nation's coming together yeah. in the middle of a of a crisis that the devil tried to birth. Amen. In the middle of what we couldn't put back together. See God can take a bad thing. And he turned around and made good out of it. Amen. Yeah. Right in the middle of a spirit of, of division. A spirit of blame. Who would go, why is it we got to blame somebody? Well let's blame this one. And let's, let's blame that one. Amen. No, no let's just seek God out. Let's work together. Amen. Let's draw closer to him. Expect him to draw closer to us. He says he will. Amen. Right. If we'll draw close to him, he'll draw close to us. Amen. So let's rebuke the spirit of division and spirit of chaos and spirit of, of confusion. The spirit of, of isolation that the enemy would want to put on the church. Yes. Oh, it's so contagious. We can't go out. We better not get out. We better not get out of the house. We better not go to town. Amen. We, we better not do that. Why? Because this thing's so, so contagious. We'll all have it by morning. Be wise. Right. Use wisdom. Yes. But, but, but don't, don't go into the spirit of fear. Yeah, this thing is, is contagious. But the enemy wants to isolate you. Body, soul, spirit, and mind. Amen. Yes. Listen, this is the perfect example. You don't have to be isolated. Your neighbor don't have to be isolated. Reach out to them. Text them. Yeah. Ask them how they're doing. Amen. Amen. Make them some cookies. Go over and leave them on the steps. Amen. Yeah. Do something good for somebody. Amen. Check on the, on the elderly. Check on the older people. Amen. Yes. Check on them. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected as a church. Let me talk to First Assembly of God. Don't let the devil isolate us and get us torn apart. Let's stay connected as a group of body, as a body, as a church of the living God. Amen. Amen. That's what we need to do in the midst of this situation. Because God, he's on our side. Yeah. He's a loving father. Amen. Right. And he said, lo, I'm with you always. Even until then, he's going nowhere. He's going to stay with us. Amen. So reach out to somebody. Stay connected to somebody. You know, I'm, I'm going to close with this this morning. In the Bible tells us that God works all things together for our good. Right. I don't believe for one minute that God brought this sickness. No. No. But I believe God's able to take it yes. and use it That's right. for our good mm -hmm. and to bring Him glory. Yes. And I'll tell you what, you got to listen to me, church. That's what I'm about to say. Nobody gets offended at me now. It'd be easy to do because you're not here. And I can't shake your hand after service and hug your neck, tell you I love you, and get we get over it real quick. Amen. So the opportunity here if you get offended, but don't do that. Don't do that. Just listen to me. As a nation, as a culture, as a people, uh, we've let so many things. How do I say this? Take high priority in our life. Amen? That's right. You heard that old saying, anything you put before God becomes an idol. That's right. Amen? Amen. That's putting it really blunt. It is. But we put a lot of things in high priority in our life. But isn't it amazing in one week, God took all those things away. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Think about what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we're a sports crazy mm -hmm. culture. Guess what? God took the NBA away. Mm -hmm. He took Major League Baseball away. Amen. Yeah. This thing did. Mm -hmm. And God said, I'll use that yeah. to draw you closer to me. Amen. 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 Oh, come on now. Amen. Think about what I'm saying. He can use all things. Well, well, I, well I'm being on Hollywood and actors. Guess what? They were gone within a week. Amen. Right. All the Hollywood shows are shut down. Everything on, on uh, New York there is closed down. Amen. 
Well, I'm crazy about NASCAR. Guess what? Not this week. It's gone. That's gone. If you're crazy about money, guess what? The stock market has took a tank. That's right. That's gone. It can all be gone. God, mm -hmm. let me challenge you to do something. Work on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Work on sitting down talking to your wife more. Work on sitting down talking to your husband more. Mm -hmm. Work on talking to your children. Get out of board game and play with your kids. Amen? Yeah. Go outside and talk to your kids. Amen? Do something outside in the yard. Draw close to God. Spend some more time in the Word. Spend some more time in prayer. Yes. This, this will help us more than more than anything. Yes. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this morning, if you've been attacked by any of these spirits that I've talked about this morning, any of this stuff has gotten the better of you, amen? Mm -hmm. Maybe you realize this thing is the best for you right now, that it's going to help you. I want to pray for you right where you're at this morning. Yes. I want you to do something for me. I want you to close your eyes right where you're in your living room, in your car, your work, watching your cell phone. Hey, we can do this for just a second. Because I want you to close your eyes, and uh, I want to pray for you. Father, right now, God, we love you and we thank you, Father. Yes. God, for this opportunity to come into people's homes and to come into their lives right now. Father, I pray for the struggling. I pray for those, God, that are dealing with insecurities. Those that are sick, Lord, we lift them up. And we pray healing in their life, God. But those that are being bombarded in their mind by the imps of hell, I, I rebuke that spirit right now that's coming against them, God. Those right now, Lord, that see and recognize and realize that they've got to make a move toward you. And this is the time to do it, God. I pray, Father, right now, give them the strength and the courage to reach out to you and to grow closer to you than they ever have. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Father, that you're with us through all this. You promised us you'd never leave us alone. You promised that you'd go with us even to the end. And we thank you for that, God. Now, I pray right now, Lord, that you just bless our church body. Bless all those that call this home and all those that are that are watching my live stream right now. I pray, pray you bless them. God, encourage them and uplift them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Hey, stay tuned in. Uh, throughout the week, we're going to come at you with some devotional stuff coming up. And also, we'll uh, keep you informed on what we'll be doing next week. God bless you. We love you. And y'all have a good day.